today we are going to see about pneumatic circuit design. This is Dr. Rajakanna Madhakanan. Please watch my video to understand how to build a pneumatic system. Before we are going to see about the pneumatic system, we are supposed to understand compressor, FRL unit, directional control valve, special purpose valve, actuator, limit switches. These are all necessary for a pneumatic system. Compressor, of course, uh, it is used to compress the air. Uh, from the compressor, you will get pressurized air. What is FRL unit? The expansion of FRL is filter, regulator, lubricator. Filter, what is the purpose of filter? To avoid unwanted particles uh, from the air, you need filter. Regulator, for what purpose? Suppose in an application, you need uh, 5 bar only. The compressed air inside the compressor is 12 bar. Then if you want to reduce from 12 bar to 5 bar, then you need regulator. So the regulator, it will regulate the pressure. The lubricator for what purpose? We are going to include some lubrication effect along with the air. When you are going to apply the air through valves or cylinders, it will avoid the friction. Because of this reason, we are applying some lubrication effect along with the air. Directional control valve means to see where you have to direct to the cylinder. If there is a two or three cylinders, so you have to direct the cylinders to the first cylinder, second cylinder, third cylinder. And not only that, for the different valves, if you want to direct the uh, air, then you need directional control valve. Of course, flow control valve is also required because when you are going for application, see, the fiber you are going to give from the compressor, then only two bar is required for one application. Before the cylinder, you are going to include the flow control valve to control the flow of the air. Special purposes valve, some pressure sequence valve, one time delay valve uh, are called a special purposes valve. Like that many special purpose valves are available in uh, pneumatic uh, system design. Uh, that one we will uh, see when some examples are coming. Actuator means it is a cylinder and piston as well. So this is the main component in a pneumatic system because from this only we are going to collect the actuation. That means mechanical movement we are going to collect from this actuator. Limit switches and proximity switches, these are all for what? When you are going to have a stroke, if you want to identify where the piston is now, and then you can uh, fix some uh, limit switches, you can fix some roller, roller valve to understand where the stroke will be. Okay, how to build a pneumatic system? Before you are going to build the pneumatic system, we are supposed to understand some of the information. You are supposed to understand about the valves and actuator, and you should know the standard symbol of uh, valves and actuators. You are supposed to understand what is mean by 3 by 2, what is mean by 5 by 2 wall. 3 by 2 wall means uh, 3 ports, 2 position wall. 5 port, 2 position wall means it is 5 by 2 wall. So these are all used for uh, directional control wall or switches for uh, some pneumatic systems. Normally open and normally close. What is mean by normally open and what is mean by normally close? Normally in, uh, in our washroom, the tap is there, this is normally closed. If it is a normally open, always water will come. So normally it is a closed one. When we are, we need water, we are going to open. So this is what the fundamental idea behind the normally open and normally closed. And roller valve, for what purpose? So this is used to identify the stroke length. And this information you're supposed to understand. And then how to name the valves. So when uh, you are going to do some uh, numeric circuit, you will come to know the naming of valves. And switches and actuators, displacement diagram means what, signal flow means what, and spring return. What is mean by spring return? When you are going to operate a valve, if you are going to press, it will open. And then if you are going to release, automatically it will come to the normally, normal position. That means if it is a normally closed position, means automatically it will come to the normally closed position. This is the reason we need spring return. Even uh, spring return uh, cylinders also there. That is called a uh, uh, single acting cylinder. When you are going to apply the air, it will extend. If you are going to stop the air, automatically it will come back due to spring return. Okay. Again, so the spring stiffness, it will act. And when you are going to release the uh, pressure or actuation, and automatically it will come back to the original position. Okay. Port and uh, position in 3 by 2 and 5 by 2 wall, and also signal in signal exhaust. So this information you are supposed to understand before you are going to understand the pneumatic circuit design. Okay. Valves. What are the different types of valves available in numeric uh, circuit system? Directional control valve. This one, shortly, we are calling as uh, DCB. And uh, non-written valve.
See, we are supposed to understand uh, what are the different types of valves available in pneumatic system design. Directional control valve we need, non-return valve we need, flow control valves we need, some pressure control valves we need, time delay valves we need, shutoff valves we need. So, variety of valves are required. And uh, so, if you are going to see in depth about these, are, uh, these valves, then it will take time. So, we are concentrating on pneumatic circuit design. And, but these valves are required when you are going to do a pneumatic circuit design. Okay. So, we are going to see a little bit about the directional control valves. See, directional control valve, there are 3 by 2 directional control valve and 5 by 2 directional control valve. 3 by 2, what is mean by 3 by 2? 3 port, 3 port means 3 holes will be there in that uh, valve. And 2 position, 2 position means what? Normally closed position means when you are going to press the valve, it will come to normally open position. When you are going to release, normally closed. So, normally closed and normally open. Uh, not normally open, normally closed and open uh, position. So, these two positions will be there. Uh, the same way, 5 by 2 valve means 5 port will be there. 5 port means 5 holes will be there. And uh, 2 position means normally closed position means when you are going to operate this uh, valve, it will come to open position. And uh, another side, it will come to closed position. So, these are all we are going to see in the due course. Okay. Method of activation. So, what are the different way of activations available? Manually, we can operate these valves. Mechanically, we can uh, operate using some lever, using some uh, switches. So, you can activate using mechanically. Sometimes, pneumatically, you can do that. Pneumatically means compress the air you are going to give means the valve will be activated. When you are going to stop the compressed air, then it will come to the normal position. This is called pneumatically activated. This is otherwise called as pilot operated. And even sometimes you can use it as electrical actuator. So, this one widely used in electronomatic system. So, there are uh, return of activation automatically if it is uh, coming to the normal position means it is called a spring return. Even if you are applying another side air and then you can make it as a uh, normal position. So, air return also it is there. So, there are different variety of uh, activation. You see here directional control valve. The symbol for the directional control valve is you see here suppose two position means you are going to draw one rectangle and you are going to divide into two. So, that means one position, the right side position will be the normal position and left side position will be when you are going to activate uh, what position it will it will transfer. So, that one it will say this left side position. Okay. See how we are going to do the 3 by 2 activation. You see here the normal position. See, when you are going to see the symbol 1, one minute. 1, 2, 3. See, the first port, so this one, you are going to give the air through this. Okay. So, now it is closed. Why it is closed? It is a normally closed condition. See, the 2, the 2 is used for exhaust now. Suppose, used air will be there. Suppose, you are going to connect one uh, cylinder here. When it is coming back, used air, it has to return or it has to exhaust. So, 2 to 3 will get contact here. Through 2 and through 3, the air will return and through 3, it will exhaust. Okay. Now, 1 is closed. Even though this is uh, uh, connected to a compressed uh, air, the air will be locked here. When you are going to press this one, automatically this position will be transferred to this position. Here, this is 1 and here, this is 2 and 3. The exhaust will, will be closed. Now, the 1 will get contact with the 2 then air will pass through this, then automatically it will go here and uh, so you can use it for the cylinder activation or you can use it for some other valve activation, you can do that. Okay, so this is called 3 by 2 normally closed, 1, 2, 3. So, 3 ports will be there. First position is right side position and left side position, when you are going to press, uh, the automatically it will transfer to this position, so 2 position will be there. So, 3 port, 2 position, directional control valve, normally closed. Even normally open is also there. See, normally open means when you are going to connect to the compressor, the automatically it will go by the time exhaust valve will, will be enclosed. When you are going to press this one, then what will happen? The input uh, air will be locked and only the air, it will pass through 2 to 3, then it will exhaust. So, this is one example. See, for example, uh, a municipality is giving water to, to public. By that time, their wall will be
Now we are going to see about the directional control valve. So first we are going to see about this uh, 3 by 2 way directional control valve. 3 by 2, what is the meaning of 3 by 2? 3 port and 2 position. 3 port means 3 holes will be there. You see here, 1, 2, 3. 1 is connected to the compressed air. Now it is closed condition, it's not going to top. And then now 2 to 3 is having some connection. See, when you are going to connect here one cylinder, if it is coming to the normal position, so you have to exhaust the used air inside the cylinder. So by that time, it has to exhaust. This 2 is connected to the port of one cylinder. When it is coming back, the used air, it will come to 2. Then after that, it will go to 3. Then it will be exhausted. When you are going to press this one, that means you are going to apply the air to the cylinder to get some forward stroke. That means to get some activation. When you are going to press, press this one, assume there is a, uh, there is a uh, pressing button. And when you are going to press, this normally closed position automatically will be transferred to the activated position. By that time, uh, when you are going to connect the one uh, with the compressor, the one, uh, the compressed air will pass through this two. It will go to the cylinder to get the forward position. By that time, 3 will become inactivated position, that means closed position. Now there is no uh, use of exhaust and this is the reason. So this port will be closed. So 1, 2, 3. 1 and 2 will become active and 3 will become inactivated position. See in the normal position, 1 will be in inactivated position, deactivated this one. And 2 to 3 will become active and then the exhaust stroke. So there will be a 2 position. This is the normally closed position. And when you are going to press, then activated position it will come. So normal position and activated position, there are two positions. And here one, two, three, three ports will be there. This is the reason three by two way directional control valve, we can say. So this is normally closed. So normally open type valve is also there. And you see here, always it is open. The air will flow from one to two. And then the three will be closed. When you are going to press by that time, one will be closed and uh, 2 to 3 will become active. So a simple example I can say, see municipality is giving water to the to, to public. By that time there will be one valve, that valve will be always in open condition. When they are going for service uh, of the tank or tank cleaning, by that time they will close the valve, main valve, and then after that they will do that, and then after that they will go. Normally, open valve there it is required so similar to that in some applications we need normally open valve so this is the reason you have to understand what is mean by normally open you see here this is 5 by 2 way directional control valve 5 5 means 5 port will be there you see here 1 2 3 4 5 so 5 ports will be there and two positions same way one is the normal position and another one is when you are going to press and then it will become to this position and sometimes pilot operated two way side pilot operated if you are going to give air in one side and then it will come to this position if you are going to give air here it will be transferred to the right side position so there are right side and left side position see now the one is connected to two that means the air is going through two then three exhaust port it is closed by that time four is connected to five so what is the purpose of this this 5 by 2 valve always used for double acting cylinder. Double acting cylinder means what? One side you are going to apply the air, then it will get forward direction. Another side you are going to apply the air means it will get reverse direction. See, when you are going to apply to get the reverse direction, one, you are, one is connected to the two. So right side of the piston you are going to apply the air, then automatically it will come to the normal position. By the time used air for the forward stroke, it has to exhaust. So it will take in care by 4 and 5th port. Then through this, it will come. Okay. Then uh, when you are going to press this one, so here when you are going to apply some amount of air, this position will be transferred to here. See that one is having the connection with 4. By the time you will get forward direction, the used air for the reverse direction, it will exhaust through 3. Now 3 is becoming active and then 5 will be in activated position. So 5 it is not right here. So at that time 4 ports will be in active position and 1 port will be in inactivated position. So 4 plus 1 that means 5 port will be there, 2 position will be there. This is called 5 by 2 way directional control valve. Now uh, see th this is the directional control valve uh, picture. So manual type this is the button I told when you are going to press. This one you are going to connect with the compressed air and then through two it will come here. 
when you are going to release, you are seeing about the picture of one uh, three by two directional control board. See, when you are going to connect uh, uh, the air through one, then uh, when you are going to press this one, the two, it will release the air. When you are going to release the two, it will taken care, and then the bottom, it will be there, the third uh, uh, perch, and then automatically the exhaust will be taken care through two to three. So the one is connected to the compressed air source, I can say source, and then the two is connected to some applications, and then there is an exhaust port in the bottom. Okay. So this is what this is manual actuation. When you are going to press this green color button, automatically the two it will give some air. So this is called the directional control valve. This is push button type. You can say push button type. There will be a spring. You see here the full symbol I have shown here. One, two, three, three port. And there is there it is divided into two positions. You see here this rectangle is divided into two. One is the normal position, this one, and the another one is the activated position. So there is a two position. And this one is the push button type. See here, push button symbol it is given. When you are going to release, automatically it will come to the normal position. So it means the spring return will be there. The spring it is given. See that all information it is available in this symbol. Three by two way, push button, spring return, normally closed wall. Okay. See, directional control wall, there are a method of activation, variety of method of activation are available in uh, uh, three by two wall. And a plunger type of activation will be there, roller operated will be there, idle return roller valve is there, and spring return type is there, spring centered will be there. So, variety of mechanical actuations will be involved in 3 by 2 directional control valve. Okay. So, this one you see here, if it is a pneumatic type of actuation, you can, we can say pilot operated, see that pneumatic type of actuation will be there. And also, there is an electrical type, solenoid operated valve will be there. And uh, this one normally we are using in 5 by 2 wall. So this one is the picture of 5 by 2 wall. You see here, this is the picture of 5 by 2 wall. You can see one port here in the down. This is called a pressure. So we are going to give the pressure here. This one and this one, it is for the pilot operation purpose. This 4 and 2 only, it is taking the air to the cylinder. Normally, uh, this directional control wall, we are going to attach nearer to the double acting cylinder. Always. This 5 by 2 wall will come into the picture when you are going to use a double acting cylinder. Double acting cylinder means you need, you have to give, apply the air through one side to get a forward stroke. By that time, uh, the used air for the reverse stroke, it has to come out and this is the reason one port is required. And when you are going to get the reverse stroke, the two will become active. You are going to apply the air to get the reverse stroke by that time. The used air for the forward stroke, it will exhaust through four. And this is the reason this four and two will be the uh, important port for the uh, for the double acting cylinder. See this 12 and uh, here I think this 13. And these two ports are used to, used to, to activate this valve. This one is connected to uh, air source. Okay. So this one, it is possible to, this, this is pilot operated. We are using a pressurized air for the operation of this 5 by 2 valve. It is possible to use uh, electrical uh, uh, component also. It is called as uh, solenoid operated. So solenoid operated uh, uh, 5 by 2 valve is also there in electro pneumatic. So now we are seeing about the pneumatic. And then we will see in the electro pneumatic uh, uh, regarding this uh, pilot uh, solenoid operated. Now pilot operated, we are going to see, you see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 port will be there. It is divided into 2. 2 position will be there. So this is pilot operated. See here 14 and 12. Uh, I think in the picture it should be 12 and 14. So there is small uh, typographical error will be there. So this is 14. So 14 if you are going to give, you will get forward direction in the double acting cylinder. If you are going to give the air here, you will get the uh, what is called uh, reverse stroke. So you are going to operate through air. See here, 3 by 2 directional control valve, some line diagram it is given here. And uh, selector switch is also there in uh, 5, 3 by 2 valve. What is mean by selector switch? When you are going to make it an uh, open condition, that means activated condition. So always it will be in activated condition. It will not go immediately to the normal position like uh, spring return. The spring is not there. So this one, so you have to eliminate there is uh, some typographical error here. So spring will not be there. And only these things will be there. Uh, spring is not required uh, for this uh, selector switch. Selector switch means you can select a open condition, you can select closed condition. Okay, 5 by 2 wall, how it is operating. You see here there is a spool. 
when you are going to move this spool through air, see the force. See now we are going to see about the operation of 5 by 2 way directional control valve. See here 14 and 12 and this is for the pilot operation. When you are going to apply the air through 14 and this spool will get movement through this direction. Automatically this will be closed and here you will get to open. Then one is going to connect uh, uh, through to 4. When this is moving, one will be the, the air flow from the 1 to 2 will be suspended. And then when you are going to move this one, 1 and 4 will become active the same time. And the 3, uh, this one, see here, the 2, it will get some connection to the 3. And then the 2 and 3, it will take, it will take care of uh, ex exhaust. And 1 and 4 will take care of inlet. The, the now, what is the position? See, the 12, you are applying the air. So this one, it is moved. You see here, the 1 is having the connection with the 2. You see here, there is a hole. 1 is having the connection with the 2. 1 is not having any connection with 4. So 4 is, 1 to 4 flow is suspended. But 4 and 5, it is becoming open. So 4 and 5 will be taking, taking care of exhaust. And 1 and 2, it is taking care of inlet. So this is what it will happen in a 5 by 2 way directional control valve. The next gate is ungate valve. Uh, what is mean by AND gate? Uh, I think in electronics you might have studied uh, AND means 1, 1 means it is 1. 1, 0 means 0, 0, 1 means 0, 0, 0 means 0. If there is a 2 signal, then only it will give some output. The same kind of principle we are applying here. This one otherwise called as dual pressure valve, AND gate valve or dual pressure valve. Both the sides you have to apply the air, then only you will get the output of the air. If you are going to apply one side, see there is a plate, this plate will move and then here and here there is another two plates, these plates will be closed so the air will not go through two. The same way when you are going to apply only 12, see this side, left side, so the same way this center path will move and then it will close the air, it will not move. So when you are going to apply both the sides, see this plate will be stay in this and there is a hole here, it will flow and then it will flow, then two through two, you will get some output. See, this is the picture of one uh, uh, anti-gate valve. See, when you are going to apply the air in both these go holes, then only the air will flow through this. So this is called and gate valve. Now we are going to see the R gate valve. Any one signal is enough in R gate. When you are going to apply here or when you are going to apply here, so it will come. Even if you are going to apply both the sides, the air will transfer uh, to the outlet and this is called R gate valve. You see here there are two ports and uh, but uh, picture wise the AND gate and the R gate it will look same but the operational wise it is completely different and this is the reason you see here this is the Pesto valve. And there will be a symbol. They used to paste the symbol on the top of the wall. And then by seeing the symbol only, you will come to know whether it is a on gate wall or R gate wall. So you will come to know. See, when you are going to apply either here or here, then automatically the air will flow through this. You see here the symbol it is given in the wall, top of the wall. And by seeing the symbol, you can understand this is R gate wall. See, now check wall. Check wall means one directional wall. It can stop the flow completely in one direction. In opposite direction, the flow is free with a minimal pressure drop. See, when you are going to apply through air, through one, so there is a ball and the air will come and will push the ball and after that it will go. When you are going to apply here, the ball will go and lock here. Then it is very, it is not possible to apply the air from two to one. But 1 to 2 is possible and this is the reason we are calling as one directional valve. This is otherwise commonly called as check valve. See flow control valve. What is mean by flow control valve? Uh, flow control valve means before applying the air to the cylinder, normally we are using this flow control valve. When you are going to adjust the screw, you see here there is a screw. When you are going to adjust the screw, the flow will be controlled. See the air will flow through this and then the air will come out. And uh, you see here, this is a one-way flow control wall. Air you are going to, you are going to adjust the arrow mark is for the adjustment. And the, the air will flow through this in an adjustable manner. See that another side, if it is flowing, see here, there is a ball. It will not allow to flow this direction. But when it is going to exhaust, see, two sides it will come. So this is for what purpose? Quick exhaust. When it is going to flow through only this direction, it will take a lot of time to come back. 
to get the return stroke in the wall uh, in the cylinder. So this is the reason. See here, this is called one-way flow control valve. One-way flow control valve means we are going to apply the air here. Here you have adjusted. You see here there is a screw in the picture. When you are going to adjust the screw, then automatically the limited amount of air only it will flow through this. There is a ball. It will not flow through this direction because ball is closed condition. But when you are going to attach this one with a cylinder, when cylinder is getting a reverse stroke, by the time you need quick exhaust, so by the time the air will come from the cylinder to, to, through this, when it is going to pass through this flow control valve in only one side means, then it will, it will exhaust only little amount of air. This is the reason we are having two ways. See here, uh, the return of air will go through this and also will go through this and this ball will be pushed and then it will go through this. See the two way, when you are going to have the exhaust condition, by the time it will take two parts, but when you are going to apply, this is one way only, it will allow, and this is the reason we are calling as one way flow control valve. Okay, so one way flow control valve, a line diagram it is given here, and uh, time delay valve is also there. Time delay valve for what purpose? When you are going to have a stroke, in the end of the stroke, you have to stay for some amount of time to get some amount of fresh air. Then after that, it is coming back means then you have to use time delay valve. So what is time delay valve? You see here, there is a flow control valve and then after that, there is an accumulator. And this is a normally 3 by 2 valve attached here. This 3 by 2 valve, it is operated by pilot operation. See, enough pressure is reaching here automatically. This one, it will be pressed and then the air will go from 1 to 2, then you will get it. Sir, how this one, it will take little bit of time. You see here, where you want the time delay, that output, for example, roller you are going to fix in the circuit, the roller valve output you are going to give through 12. When you are going to pass the air through this, see, when you are going to adjust here like flow control valve, the air will go slowly, the small amount of air it will go. That air pressure is not enough to press this 3 by 2 valve to make from normally, normally closed condition to open condition. The small amount of air is not enough. So by the time this air it will go and accumulate inside this accumulator. Similar to the compressor tank. It's a small compressor tank, you can say very small. So there is an accumulator. The air it will go and accumulate here. When you are going to accumulate more and more air, what will happen? More amount of pressure will be generated inside the accumulator. Once more amount of pressure is generated, this air it will come here, it will push this one, then automatically the 3 by 2 valve normal position will be transferred to the activated position, then it will give some amount of pressure. To do this activation, it will take little bit of time, and this is the reason. To, uh, to get the air, you will get some time delay. So according to that, you can make it time delay maximum of 30 seconds and minimum of 0 to 1 second, minimum of 1 second and maximum of 30 seconds. But sir, how can I uh, uh, fix the exact time delay using this time delay valve? It's difficult in this mechanical type of a time delay valve. Based on trial and error only, you can fix the time delay using this time delay valve. Okay. There is a pressure sequence valve, or what purpose pressure sequence valve is uh, required? When you are going to use one application, see for example, the piston is going to apply some amount of pressure on particular place. Yeah, yes, I need 12 bar, it is, see, even, it is, even though if it is extended up to the uh, extreme forward stroke, but I need some amount of pressure in the extreme forward stroke, then only it has to return means by that time, we are going to use the pressure sequence valve. You see here, there is a pressure regulator and there is a 3 by 2 valve. In uh, time delay valve, we have we, we have one uh, flow control valve and 3 by 2 valve. Here, one pressure regulator and uh, 3 by 2 valve. So here, you are going to regulate the pressure according to the required amount of pressure. So where you need by the time you are going to apply the air here, Mm, that means uh, normally we are going to tap from the cylinder pressure line and you are going to attach here 
and uh, after that uh, when uh, when required amount of pressure is built inside the cylinder it means that much amount of the pressure you are going to get from the uh, piston then what is the purpose of pressure sequence valve so if you want to get required amount of the pressure in the extreme forward stroke then you have to go for the pressure sequence valve see i need some amount of pressure to do one application means then i have to depend only on this pressure sequence valve pressure sequence valve is the combination of pressure regulator and 3 by 2 valve see once the required amount of pressure is obtained inside the cylinder then only this pressure regulator will release the signal and it will give the pressure to press this uh, uh, 3 by 2 valve so by the time normally closed condition it will be transferred to the open condition then you will get the output from this to do the next application see the purpose of this one means uh, required amount of pressure so we have to check the uh, pressure inside the cylinder so whatever the line it is going to the cylinder you are going to tap so t join we used to call it as t join one it will go to uh, cylinder then another one it will come to this 12 so inside the cylinder if it is going to build more and more and more and more amount of uh, pressure means automatically that amount of pressure will be transferred to here there is a pressure regulator so you have regulate the pressure once the required amount of pressure is obtained then only this pressure regulator will uh, transfer the air pressure more amount of air pressure here uh, to push the 3 by 2 valve uh, by that time it will transfer from here to here then only it will allow so before that it will not allow it means what required amount of pressure once it is obtained then only this 3 by 2 valve will open and then it will get so until reaching that pressure then it will not open it means we will get the required amount of pressure in the application so this is the purpose of pressure sequence valve see uh, there are uh, uh, numbers for the energy supply unit power components uh, control elements and the input elements see when you are going to use you have to use switch 1 switch 2 so if if there is only one cylinder then 1s1 you have to use 1s2 you have to use sir how can i do that switch 1 s1 means switch 1 the the another one one the the front one means this is for the cylinder one the switch 2 switch 2 for the cylinder one this is valve 1 for the cylinder one valve 2 for the cylinder one this is 1a and 2a means 1a is the cylinder and 2a means if the, if you are going to use two cylinders means 2a and was that one was that two means then uh, from where you are going to collect the energy supply input suppose uh, the first line if you are going to collect was z1 and second uh, so second side see there was that was that means it's coming from the compressor energy supply unit okay uh, now we are going to see about development of a single actuator development of a circuit for using single actuator single acting cylinder see the problem number 1 we are going to now we are going to see about the development of pneumatic circuit so how to develop a pneumatic circuit a simple circuit we are going to see in the problem number 1 so what is the problem number 1 yeah double acting cylinder is getting forward motion when a 3 by 2 push button is pressed if the push button is released the double acting cylinder is coming to backward position draw the relevant pneumatic circuit i told already when you are going to use a double acting cylinder definitely 5 by 2 valve will come see without 5 by 2 valve you cannot operate a double acting cylinder so you supposed to understand when you are going to read the problem a double acting cylinder means normally they will not give in the problem it is going to flow through the double acting cylinder so a double acting cylinder is getting forward stroke when a 3 by 2 push button is pressed so of course 3 by 2 push button uh, uh, is required the double acting cylinder means double acting cylinder is required and 5 by 2 valve is required so three component compulsory required if the push button is released the double acting cylinder is coming to the backward position so push button means it's a spring written push button when you are going to release it will come back to the normal position draw the relevant circuit you see here we are going to include one uh, double acting cylinder you see here this is the symbol for the 5 by 2 valve and this is the symbol for the push button operated 3 by 2 valve sir i i have to draw here 3 by 2 valve 
I have to draw here pi by 2 wall. I have to draw here a double arcing cylinder. How to connect that? See, when you are going to connect, always you have to connect with the normal position. You see here, I have connected to the normal position. This is the activated position. You should not connect. See, this is understood. If you are going to study the pneumatic, if you are a pneumatic engineer or you are going to submit to the pneumatic engineer, definitely he will come to know what will be the activated position. See here, I have connected this, three, this, this one to this cylinder. See, automatically it has to come. So it's not given, uh, it's not required first of all the double pilot uh, 5 by 2 valve. See that the 5 by 2 valve is the spring written. When I am going to press this one, 1s1. One 1s1, one. One one, I will tell uh, once again the, what is mean by S1 means this is, this is used as a switch and this is used as a valve and this one is the cylinder. The cylinder I have given the name 1A and the valve V1, valve 1 for the cylinder 1 and this is the switch 1 for the cylinder 1. See here this is OZ1 so only one line is enough. See when you are going to give input, when you are going to press this one it will come to this one. Then uh, 1 to 2 it will take care. Then uh, if you are going to apply automatically this position it will be transferred to here. Then 1 you are going to apply uh, through 4 then it will go automatically this one it will extend when you are going to release this one then automatically it will come to this position now whatever the position now it is showing this position it will come by the time the compressed air will go through one to two that means if it is going to two then it will come back by the time you have to exhaust the used air for the forward stroke that one it will come to the four and then it will exhaust through five see here According to the problem, your double acting cylinder is getting forward motion. When a 3 by 2 push button is pressed, if the put push button is released, the double acting cylinder is coming to backward position. You see here, we are going to press, it's going here. This one it will transfer to here, the air will go here, and then it will go to the forward direction. When it is going through here, then it is coming back. By the time when it will when it will come, when you are going to release this one, this will come to the normal position. That means it will stop here. And then this also it will come to the another position that means now whatever the position I have shown it will come then 2 it will go, go here then by the time it will come and then it will come to the normal position. This is the solution of the problem number 1. 1A is the double acting cylinder this is the power component. 1V1 is the 5 by 2 way single air operated control element. 1S1 is the 3 by 2 way push button spring return normally closed wall. This is for the input element. OZ1 is the compressor it is called supply element. Now we are going to see about the signal flow, how it is going, you see, when you are going to have the initial position, it's going here, it's going here, normal position, when you are going to press here, the air is going through this, and then it's going, already this one, it is connected to the four, it's going here, then it is getting extension, and uh, see, when you are going to release, again it will stop here, then the air it will go, and then now it is going here, and then it will come back, by the time this, uh, uh, light blue color it is taking care of exhaust see that light blue color is taking care of exhaust so this is the signal flow for the problem number one now we are going to see the problem number two a double acting cylinder is getting forward motion when a three by two push button is pressed now we are going to see about the problem number two a double acting cylinder is getting forward motion when a three by two push button is pressed similar to the problem number one there is a double acting cylinder if there is a double acting cylinder definitely five by two wall will come when a 3 by 2 push button is pressed, so this one it is it will act as a switch. So 3 by 2 push button is pressed. See here the next one after reaching extreme forward stroke. How can I find the reaching of extreme forward stroke? In the problem number one, we didn't describe anything. It has to reach extreme forward stroke or extreme reverse stroke, nothing. Only thing 3 by 2 by pressing the 3 by 2, it will extend, and then if you are going to release, it will come back. So this is what the problem number one. It was very simple. But here after reaching extreme forward stroke, the double acting cylinder is coming to backward position. Draw the relevant pneumatic circuit. See, a double acting cylinder means double acting cylinder is required, the component requirement. And the double acting cylinder, if it is coming, that 5 by 2 valve is required. Of course, we have to keep 5 by 2 valve. And 3 by 2 push button is pressed, it is given in the problem. 3 by 2 push button is required. After reaching extreme forward stroke, here another one valve will come. So, what is that valve? That is called roller valve. You see here, to identify the extreme forward stroke, you have to keep another one wall, another one wall, not another one wall only, but it is going to act as a switch and this is the reason it will come under the category of 
switch. It is called roller wall. That is also similar to this uh, 3 by 2 wall. Instead of push button type, here roller will be there. When it is going to extend, it will push the roller. When it is going to push the roller, already the one is connected to the OZ1. Then what will happen when, you are, when, when this uh, piston is going to push this one, it will give some signal. That signal you are going to use it to reverse. That means to come back or to make another position of this 5 by 2 wall. Then automatically it will transfer to the position and then it will go back. So by the time you cannot use one way pilot operated 5 by 2 wall, here you have to use two way pilot operated. You see here, when you are going to press this push button like problem number one, it's going here, this position it will be transferred to here, then automatically air will go, the piston will get extension position. After getting extension position, it is going to press this 1s2, the 1s2 it will give some uh, amount of air, that air you are going to give. See that 1s2 only I have drawn here. This is called 1s2, roller operated. So roller operated, when you are, when it is going to push, this one it will give, this signal it will be given, this position will be transferred to this position, then automatically the air will go here, that means here it will cut. So this one it will taking care of the exhaust only. See, it, it will go here, then after that the used air for the forward stroke it will come through, uh, 4 to 5, then automatically it will go back. So you can identify the extreme forward stroke by keeping 1 as 2 in any of the positions. See, extreme forward stroke or even 1 meter or even 50 centimeter or 5 centimeter. If you want the stroke length is according to your application, then that particular place you have to place this roller wall. The roller wall output you are going to connect another side of the 5 by 2 wall. Then after reaching that particular position, automatically the cylinder, it will go back. You see here, this one is the 3 by 2 and this one is the 5 by 2. Since this is using a switch, switch, so switch 1 for the cylinder 1, wall 1 for the cylinder 1. This is the cylinder 1A. See here, this is switch 2 for the cylinder 1. Even here you can draw or else you can give the name here. You can draw in the bottom to avoid the complexity of the circuit because many lines will come. This is the reason normally they will give name and this wall they used to draw in the bottom of the circuit. Okay, so this one it will go here and then you will get uh, reverse stroke. See here the component list you have to give some description and remark I have given. 1A, 1V1, 1S1, 1S2, OZ1. 1A you know very well, double acting cylinder, 1V1. 5 by 2, double pilot. You see there, both the sides, it's, uh, uh, we are applying the air to make the different positions. And switch 1, this is uh, used as a switch to start the circuit. And switch 2 is the roller, rail lever valve. And then OZ1 is the compressor line. See, it's given signal flow also here. Uh, you see here. When in the initial position, it will go here. See, already the OZ1 we have given for three places. Only now it is taking care exhaust. When you are going to press, the air is going here. Then automatically this position will be transferred to here. The air is going inside. Then see here it is given uh, clearly here. So it is going to take care. And then it, you see in this position, see the air is going here. The air it is going inside. Then you are getting forward stroke. By the time you use the air for the reverse stroke, it is getting exhaust. And then after reaching uh, uh, 1s2, then what will happen? The 1s2 is becoming active. So this is becoming inactive. Through 1s2, it is going here right side. Then after that, uh, what will happen? The air, it is passing through this. Then after that, it is coming through this one exhaust. So air is going here. Then automatically, you will get the return stroke uh, according to the problem given. So now we are going to see the problem number three. Problem number three is, yeah, double acting cylinder piston is in extreme reverse position. Sir, how can I find the extreme reverse, reverse position? Before, in the problem number two, we try to find the extreme forward stroke, but here extreme reverse stroke means here also you have to place one roller wall to identify the extreme reverse position. Piston is getting forward motion when a 3 by 2 selector switch is turned on. You see here, there are two conditions. One condition is, yeah, double acting cylinder should be in extreme reverse position. The piston is getting forward position when you have 3 by 2 selector switch. Selector switch means you can make it as on for some period of time. Whenever you want to off, you can switch off. Similar to our house light. Okay. You are going to switch on. 
and then up to you are sitting inside the room it will be in switch on condition when you are uh, moving out of this room by uh, by the time you are going to switch off the uh, switch uh, switch off the bulb or the switch off the your tv anything so uh, this is uh, uh, 3 by 2 selector switch means whenever you want you are going to on and then you will allow up to you are going to use it and then after that whenever you don't want you can close this one. See 3 by 2 selector switch is turned on after reaching extreme power, uh, power source. So this is also you supposed to find that means you need two roller valve. One is used to find the extreme reverse stroke another is used to find the extreme power stroke. After reaching extreme power stroke the double acting cylinder is coming to backward position. The to and fro motion is continuously working. Before that problem number 1 and problem number 2, when you are going to press it will work, it will stop with one cycle. But here it has to work continuously up to the selector switch is turned off. Selector switch when, it, when you are going to turn off, by the time it has to turn off. Draw the relevant pneumatic circuit. See what are the components required when you are going to see the double acting cylinder, uh, cylinder means 5 by 2 valve will come. Of course, extreme reverse position means one roller valve is required. Piston is getting forward motion when 3 by 2 selector switch. So, 3 by 2 selector switch is also required. And then after that, the extreme forward stroke, extreme forward stroke means then one roller valve is required, extreme forward stroke to identify. But now, you have to understand there are two logic in the beginning. One, you have to operate the selector switch. Another, you have to check whether the double acting cylinder reached the extreme reverse stroke or not. This is the reason you need one more valve. You see here, I'm going to give this one, alternate solution only. But you can do the, using a serious condition also, uh, there is a two type of solution here. I'm going to explain only one type of solution to avoid confusion. You see here, this is called a selector switch. So how can you differentiate a push button type and selector switch? You see here, the V type of symbol will be there. And this one V type, if you are going to place uh, in, instead of a straight line, then you can say it is a selector switch. So by seeing the symbol, you can differentiate selector switch. See, when you are going to turn on, see, you have to identify the two logic, whether the extreme reverse stroke is obtained or not. See, I am going to place one switch. This is the first switch normally. So when, it, when you are going, when you are not going to operate the circuit, where the piston will be, piston will be in the extreme reverse stroke. By the time, it is pressing this one, one as one, it is pressing this one. So this is the reason you see here, whenever you are not going to operate the circuit, the one as one will be in the pressed condition. This is the reason you see here, one vertical line and a slanting line we are going to mention. That means even if you are going to operate, this will be in the pressed condition. If it is in pressed condition, what will be the normally closed circuit? closed wall it will become to the activated position you see here in the activated position only i have connected the reason behind this means see already it is in activated position even if you are not operating the circuit you see here when you are going to connect uh, from the compressed line to here if you are going to operate the compressor immediately the air will come and then will stay here i have included one and gate wall and gate means what if you are having two uh, signal then only it will give see here I have included in this circuit one AND gate wall what is AND gate wall if you are going to get two signal then only it will go see here when you are going to attach with this uh, what is called a roller wall because already it is in pressed condition the roller wall will uh, pass this air to the one side of the AND gate another side it has not come when you are going to operate this selector switch, then only another side air will come. What is the uh, condition of this uh, AND gate valve? If you are going to get air in both the sides, then only it will go. When you are go when you are not going to operate this selector uh, selector switch, one side it will come. Why? Because already this one is in pressed condition. That means activated condition. The air it will pass uh, uh, immediately, and then the air will stay here. This another side it will wait for the air. When you are going to operate the selector switch, the air it will come, then it will go here, then 5 by 2 valve, then 5 by 2 valve position will be changed. If it is going to change, the air it will go here, then it will extend. By that time, even though the selector switch is on, if it is moving little bit away from this roller valve, roller valve will come to normally closed position. This already pressed condition, it will come to closed position. 
the air it will not go through this that means this one it will not conduct so here the air is arrested so uh, the air see here the, this one is it is connected already the position only changed the air it will go then it will go 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 and it will reach the extreme forward stroke in the extreme forward stroke you have uh, placed another roller ball 1s2 so 1s2 when it is going to press then 1s2 it will give some signal you see here 1s2 we have given then this one it will give the signal if you are going to give the signal here then automatically the position of the 5 by 2 wall will be changed from here to here that time the air it will go here then after reaching extreme forward stroke it will go back when it is going back already the selector switch is in on condition the air will be here in the 14 when it is going to the extreme reverse stroke then it will press 1s1 then 1s1 normally closed to activated position it will come then the air it will go then it will go then immediately it will push then it will reach the extreme forward stroke then extreme forward stroke uh, uh, it will give the signal then it will go back when it is going to press 1s1 it will come it will go it will come so to and fro action will be taken place here continuously until this selector switch is going to switch off see this is the signal flow you see here see when you are going to give this gap then uh, what will happen so all information it is given so this is the way only one then all other so you try so whatever the signal flow all those things i have explained uh, uh, in the previous slide problem number four yeah double acting cylinder is to advance if one of two push button is operated if the push button is then released the cylinder is to react yeah, double acting cylinder. The yeah, double acting cylinder is right here, and 5 by 2 valve is right here. Is to advance one of two push buttons. That means two push buttons are there. Any one of the push button, if you are going to press, then it has to work. That means you have to go for R gate. You see here, I am going to have two push buttons, one as one and then one as two. And there is a wall, and this one coming under the category of wall. This is the reason wall one for the cylinder one. I have given name. See, when you are going to press this one, it will go here, it will conduct, and then the uh, cylinder double acting cylinder is getting forward stroke when you are going to press this one and then it will go here then it will conduct it will go if you are going to stop any one of this automatically it will come back and this is the reason 5 by 2 one way pilot operator is there then another position it will be taken care by the spring return and this is the solution of the problem number four it's very easy to understand the R gate valve so we have given this one and uh, exercise number one so you try a yeah, double acting cylinder is to be used to, to transfer parts from a magazine the cylinder is to advance fully when a push button is operated and then retract automatically the full extension is confirmed by a roller ball full extension so we have to use one roller ball the cylinder is to continue forward even push button is released if you are releasing the push button even though it has to move so by the time how can we do that you try to understand and then after that before full extension is reached the speed of the cylinder is to be adjustable that how can i adjust the speed of the cylinder already i explained one flow control valve you have to include one flow control valve in between the 5 by 2 valve and the cylinder then you can say you can adjust the Using a flow control valve, you can adjust the speed of the cylinder. So this is what it is given here. The speed of the cylinder is to be adjustable in both the direction of motion. So you can include two one-way flow control valve in the air going inside for the forward stroke and air going inside for the reverse stroke. Both the sides you have to include flow control valve to adjust the speed of the cylinder. So this is some of the clue I have given. You try exercise number one. And then the summary I want to include in the end of the lecture. So there are valves and actuators to build a pneumatic circuit. Of course, it is required. In valves, there are normally open and normally closed based on the operation. If almost normally closed are uh, using, but normally open rarely we are using. But according to the application, sometimes normally open also will be used. In valves, there are variety of operating techniques such as push button type, selector switch, lever operated, lower of uh, roller operated many operating techniques are there the push button type uh, 3 by 2 valves are available and uh, roller type 3 by 2 valves are available and these are all majorly we are using in uh, pneumatic circuits 5 by 2 valve it's mostly used for the blacking cylinder and shuttle valve uh, means it's a uh, R logic valve and dual pressure valve means it's a uh, analogic valve analogic valve means we need 
two signals and R logic means any one signal is required to get the output from the R logic uh, gate and the time delay valve is used to, to give some time delay so we are going to see some uh, examples in the coming uh, video and the pressure sequence valve is used to identify the required amount of pressure obtained in the cylinder or not and the selector switch is used to do the continuous operation in a pneumatic circuit. We have seen some uh, examples and uh, uh, you watch my next video then uh, we are I am going to discuss some of the examples including this dual pressure valve and logic valve or logic valve time delay valve pressure sequence valve and the many more thank you for watching this video and then we'll meet you in the next video